Okay, in this problem we're asked to estimate the double integral of f over an area A. And our region R is defined as the cross product, or the, the cross of the interval negative 1 to 0, cross the interval from 0 to 2. And then we're asked to estimate this using the upper left corners of our subrectangles and using the lower right corners of our subrectangles. And we're given a, ch a chart of all the values of f at various points. So we're given x ranging from negative 1 to 0 and y ranging from 0 to 2. So we can just kind of quickly sketch our region that we're looking at onto R2. So we're looking at x ranging from negative 1 to 0. So if we let this be negative 1. Then we're looking at the values between here and here in x values crossed with 0 to 2. So our y values from 0 to 2. So we're looking at this rectangular area um, where our x value has a length of 1 and our y value has a length of 2. And we see that our region is uh, partitioned into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points, so 5 regions. So So we have 0, negative 0.2, negative 0.4, negative 0.6, negative 0.8, negative 1. And then our y values are partitioned into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points. So again, 5 regions. And our y value is incrementing at 0.4, so so we have 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, or 0 .1, 1.2, 1.6, and then 2. And our values of f that are given are all of the points of intersection. So our first point of f at when f is equal to 4 is when y is 2 and x is negative 1. So that means y is 2, x is negative 1. So we're at this point. And we're given all of the points of f are all of the values of f of the intersection of these lines. So we're given a 6 by 6 grid of points. And that's as shown here. And so we want to calculate or estimate our double integral using the upper left corners of our subrectangles. So we'll start at the upper left corner in this case, and we'll use this value to estimate our region in this block. So what does that mean? That means we're taking our value of 4 and 
we're multiplying it by our change in x, which is 0.2 times our change in y, which is 0.4. And we get 4 times 0.08. or 0.32. So this is just one of our pieces, but it's just to demonstrate what we're doing. So we say that this little sub rectangle has an area, if we're estimating it using the upper left corners, it has an area that estimates point as 0.32. And we want to do that for all of our sub rectangles in this region. So when we go down, it, when we decrease our y, we'll calculate this area with this point. Similarly, this area with this point. This area with this point. And this area with this point. So in this column, the only point that we're not going to be interested in is this bottom left corner. So we're going to be using all of these values of f other than that. So that corresponds to when y is equal to 0 and x is equal to negative 1. So that's just this 0 value of f. So we don't need that for our upper left corner. And similarly, as we go across, we'll have the, these five points will estimate the area of this row. And again, we have just one point, and that's when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2 that we won't be using. So when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2, we're at, we have this value, f of f is equal to 2, and we're not going to be using that either. So we can see that when we generalize it to fill in our entire region, we're going to have all of these points when x is equal to 0 that we won't be using, and all of these points when y is equal to 0 that we won't be using. So we can kind of draw a little rectangle around, or rather a bigger rectangle, around all of the points of F that we're going to be using in our upper left corner estimation. And as you might expect, it's the biggest 5 by 5 square that's in the far upper left. Okay, so now now we want to take our sum to incorporate that entire region. So we want our x values to range from um, x equals 0 to or rather, x equals negative 0.2 to negative 1. And then our y values are going to be ranging from y equals Point four two two. So again, we can we can look at our 
graph and see that the region that we're, look, we're interested in looking at for our points is the points that intersect this box that I just drew. And so the x values are going to be ranging from negative 0.2 to 1 and y values from 0.4 to 2. Okay, so we've written that there, and we could index um, our values so that it's a little bit easier to read and we're incrementing by one, but it doesn't really matter. So we have our sum of our function of our values of f, And that's multiplied by our change in x times our change in y, or just our change in area. So we've already actually calculated that in the one quick example that I, I illustrated, and that was our change in x is incrementing by 0.2, and our change in y is incrementing by 0.4. So that corresponds to our delta x, delta y. So that's 0 0.08 for all of our points. So as we vary our x values, we'll start with a y equals 0.4. So And then we're starting at x equals negative 0.2. And then we're multiplying it by the area that that point should be representing, 0 0.08. And then For our second point, we're still, oh, um, so in this case I've written f a little non-conventionally with the y first and then x, so we have f of y comma x, but we see that we're basically just going to be summing up all of the points in our grid in the upper left 5x5 five five that I had boxed around and multiply all of them, I'll multiply each of them by 0 0.08. So we can just pull a 0 0.08 on the outside of all of these terms and then we're just going to be summing up our values in the upper, in our grid here that I boxed around. So we're going to have 0 0.08 times 4 plus 3.28, etc., all the way until we get to 0 0.416. And so Okay, so I can just write this out.
Okay, so on our grid, I summed these a little bit oddly, but um, so we have our x values and our y values. And we had our our five by five upper left corner of that grid. So the way I summed them in the in the way we I wrote it is from bottom to top of this grid. And then you can see that here, so I just put an ellipsis in to represent all of the terms. Uh, I'm assuming that you can all figure out what those values are. And then we summed them all up and we multiplied it by 0 0.08. And we get that that equals 3.456. So that's our estimation of our upper left um, corners of our sub-rectangles. Now we want to do this, a similar thing and use the lower right triangles or corners of our subrectangles to estimate our double integral. So if we are to take the lower left corners, that means that we'll start, or lower right corners, that means we're gonna start with the lower right of our grid or the lower right of our partitioned area and we'll use this point. So our first point is zero, zero, and we're gonna use that to estimate the area of this square. And similarly, we'll use this point, uh, the point negative 0 0.2 comma zero to estimate this square. And so we'll do that all the way until we get to this point, in which case we'll be estimating this far left, bottom left corner of our partition. So that means the only point that we aren't using is when x is equal to negative one and y is equal to zero. And so that corresponds to, again, this same point, this zero, zero, this first zero, zero, um, that we aren't going to be using but we are going to be using all the other points when x is equal to zero. So, or when y is equal to zero, sorry. So when y is equal to zero, we're, we're going to be using this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point. And these are all zero. Okay, so I've just used an arrow to extend our bottom row, but they're all zeros. And so we want to, so we have accounted for this bottom row of our partition. Now, as we move up and as we increase values of y from our point zero, zero, this point will account for this square and so on until we get to the point uh, 1.6 or 0, 1.6 and that will account for this upper right corner. So when x is equal to zero, we want all points except for when y is equal to two. So y equals two. So we also don't want this point negative two, two, but we want all other points. So we want all of these other points. So we can see that as you might have guessed, um, with the first part, we had the upper left five, most five, point, five by five grid. Um, similarly, as we generalize this to fill the rest of our grid, we see that we're going to get a five by five grid that covers the bottom right, the lower right corner of our given table. So 
Now over here, I'll, I'll use the same terminology so it's not um, confusing, but we'll use f of y comma x. And so we want to sum Now, so we have a similar this is our five by five grid of points that are, we're going to be using to estimate. So we want our x value to range from 0 to 0 0.8, negative 0 0.8, and then our y value to range from 0 to 1.6, so that we cover our, our entire partition. So we'll have the double summation where y is ranging from 0 to 1.6 and has a step of 0.4 and our x ranges from 0 to negative 0.8 and it steps at minus 2 or minus 0.2 sorry and we want to sum our values of f at those points and then multiply that by our change in x and our change in y. We already know our change in x times our change in y is given here as 0 0.2 times 0 0.4 equals 0 0.08. So we just need to, we can pull that out since it's the same for all of our values. So we have zero point zero eight times the summation of all of our points that are in the bottom right corner of our grid, our table that we're given. And again, I have those points. So again, I've just taken a subset of our points, and this time we're summing from the top down, top down. Like so. And we're multiplying that summation by our DA, which is 0.08. And our final result is one point nine eight four. So we see that it doesn't really surprise us by looking. So we we notice that our upper right or our upper left um, sub rectangles produces larger area or a larger approximation than the bottom left. And we notice that we would expect that since in our lower right estimation, we have an entire row of zeros. And our, our upper right column, our leftmost column and our topmost row are also 
of the most magnitude. So we would also expect that um, by using those values, it would also increase our estimation. So just by looking at our grid again, we see that, or our table again, we see that that makes sense, that um, our estimation using the upper left corners would be larger than our estimation using the lower right 